What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to break down crankbait fishing for beginners. If you are a more advanced crankbait fisherman, you may or may not get anything out of this video. So if you're new to crankbait fishing or you're just not throwing them at all, I'm here to help you today because crankbait fishing can be a great way to land more fish. What crankbaits do is they dive to different levels of water depending on what type of crankbait it is. So it's a good way to locate fish that are in all different depths of water. I'll be covering the basic shallow crankbaits that dive anywhere from three to five foot deep all the way to the deeper diving crankbaits that can reach 20 feet and beyond. Also, I'll be going over some of the hardware you may want to add to some of these crankbaits. I'll go over some of the gear to throw them on, as well as the tool that you'll need to make modifications to these safely without hooking yourself. There are some higher priced crankbaits on the market, but since this video is for beginners, we're going to go ahead and keep it simple today with some of the more affordable crankbaits. And we'll go ahead and start with the Strike King 1.5. This is one of the smaller crankbaits. This one dives down to about three to five foot deep. It has a square bill on the front, and this thing is completely chewed up. As you can see, the eyeball is knocked out. Uh, this thing has caught a lot of fish. It works very good. The 2.5 dives to the same depth as the 1.5, so you're still gonna be able to reach that three to five foot depth. Um, the only difference is this has a larger, it's a larger profile. It's almost double in size, and it has larger hooks. They cost about the same price, five to six dollars, and these are great square bill crankbaits to get started with. The only bad thing about these that I've uh, ran into is that the split rings on them rust out and they rust out very quickly. I've actually had one of these within the first hour start to show signs of rust. I've never had that on another lure. So with these crankbaits um, and all crankbaits, you may actually want to change out the split rings and or the hooks. A uh, popular split ring is the owner hyperwire split ring. These are very strong um, and they do not rust. So I'm going to change those out or I do change those out uh, after seeing how easily these rusted on all these crankbaits. And what I use to do that is a set of split ring pliers. I don't know if you can see that tooth right there, but that tooth is going to dig in between the split ring and then you just turn it and remove the hook or the split ring itself as well. You definitely want to get you a pair of those split ring pliers though, because using a regular pair of pliers, you run the risk of hooking yourself. So you always want to be safe because it's, it's never fun to pull a hook out of your hand. If you're willing to spend a few extra bucks and get a little bit more higher quality crankbait, um, the Sixth Sense Cloud9 Mini Mag SB 3.8 is a very solid looking crankbait. Let's go ahead and take this one uh, out of the box and take a look. The Mini Mag SB 3.8 is slightly bigger than the 2.5, not by much, but it is a larger profile. The split rings on these look really solid. They have that black finish on them, and they do not look like they will rust anytime soon. The hooks on here are also very, very solid looking. This one comes in at right around 10 bucks, but everything's ready to go right out of the box, and this looks like a great square bill crankbait as well. Um, also, I think I said when I was talking about the split rings that the, the owner ones do not rust. Those are not rust proof. What I meant to say was they just won't rust right away like some of these KVDs do right out of the box. Now that we've covered the square bills and the three to five foot depth range, let's go ahead and head a little deeper down to the nine to 12 foot range. In front of me is the Strike King KVD 3XD. This one is also right around five to six dollars and it's a great tiny little deep diving crankbait. It's gonna get right down to that nine to 12 foot area. It has some rattles in there, which can call up some fish, and it also has a long bill on it. With the deeper diving crankbaits, the longer the bill, that usually means the deeper it's gonna dive. This is a great lure, and I've caught tons of fish on this one. Now that we've covered the nine to 12 foot range, let's go ahead and head down to the 20 foot range. This is the 6XD, also made by Strike King. It is about three times the size of the 3XD. It's just a very larger profile. It has the rattles in there also. A much bigger bill, and that's what's getting you down to the 20 uh, foot depth range. This is a great lure also, produces big fish as well. Last up for lures, we have the Mega Bass Deep X 300. 
This one also dives to about 17 to 20 foot deep. It is on the more pricier side as it's gonna cost you about $20. But this is the best deep diving crankbait that I own um, and it's worth every bit of that $20. The bill on it is skinnier and longer than the 6XD. It casts farther, it dives uh, to the same depth and it seems like it does less wear and tear on my shoulder. Um, the rattle in this is real sweet. The rattle in the 6XD sounds like BBs. This one has more of a solid one knocker in there. Um, so to do a size comparison real quick, there's the 3XD, the Mega Bass Deep X 300, and then the KVD Strike King 6XD. Now that we've covered all the basic lures and the depths that they go to, let's go ahead and jump into the gear. As you could see on that last Mega Bass crankbait, I had a swivel attached to it. There's three reasons that I use the swivel when I'm throwing crankbaits. The first reason is I'm constantly changing to hit different, different depths of water, trying out different colors, and I don't want to keep tying a different knot every time I change a crankbait. So it makes it really easy to change them in and out when using a swivel. Also, when you pull in weeds, because you are dragging these deep, and you will pull in weeds, it helps with line twist and things like that. The third reason is I lost a lot of crankbaits when I first started crankbaiting uh, to pike. Because when they come in and smash that lure, they were snagging a little bit of that line in their mouth. And they would just bite right through the line. Their teeth are like razors. The swivel is not going to keep you 100% from losing your lure, but when they strike, I, I actually have never lost one on a swivel, but I'm sure it will happen. But when they strike, the teeth tend to hit the metal part of that instead of the line. So those are the three reasons I use a swivel. Since this is a basic beginner crankbaiting video, I'm not going to go into the line too much. I'm going to keep it real simple. You want to throw fluorocarbon. Reason being is you're trying to get these lures down as deep as you can and fluorocarbon sinks. I would recommend throwing on 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon. I throw the Berkley Vanish Transition. I fish a lot of crystal clear water and this is supposed to be invisible underwater. It's a pretty cool line. It changes color when it's actually out of the water. But I would definitely recommend starting out with fluorocarbon just so you can get used to how deep you can actually get these crankbaits. Last up are the rod and reel setups that you're going to want to use. When it comes to the rod, you just need something six foot six to seven foot medium heavy. When it comes to the reel, I know these high gear ratio reels are really popular right now, like the 8.1s. Uh, but for deep water crankbaiting, you're going to want to go with something with a slower gear ratio because it's got more torque and that's going to save you damage on your shoulder and you're going to be able to fish longer. If you don't throw deep water crankbaits, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you get out there and try to throw a deep water crankbait on an 8 to 1 gear ratio reel, your shoulder is going to be destroyed. You're either going to tear a rotator cuff or you just won't be able to actually physically reel in the lure anymore. So I recommend a slower gear ratio uh, reel. Like I said, I use the 5.5 and when it comes to the rod, 6 foot 6 to 7 foot medium heavy should get the job done. Now that we went over all the lures and the gear, the last thing to talk about is the retrieve. There's multiple ways you can retrieve crankbaits. You can reel real fast. You can reel real slow. You can rip, pause, rip, rip, pause. Um, retrieve real fast, pause, then go slow. There's multiple ways to do it. You can actually troll these things too. Uh, the 3XD is my go-to. I fish on a John boat, as you guys know if you've watched any of my videos. And uh, I just have a trolling motor on there and I cover a lot of water. So if I'm moving from spot to spot, I'll throw these things out and troll and just catch fish on the way, moving spot to spot. I really hope I covered all the basics of crankbait fishing for you in this video today. If this is something you're new at or something you haven't done before, I really hope that this video helps you and inspires you to get out there and start throwing crankbaits. It's a way to catch more fish it's a way to catch bigger fish, and it's something you want to add to your fishing arsenal if you haven't done so already. 
If you like the video, please click the like button. Also, please subscribe to the channel or click on my profile pic in the lower right hand corner. It's free, it costs nothing, it helps keep the channel going. Thanks again for watching, good luck out there in 2020, keep those lines tight, and we'll see you next time.